What up? It's Jimmy from Odds.com. This is a clip from our big NCAA basketball show. Check out the entire show. Hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on Odds.com. We move on to the A-10. George Mason Patriots, 8-6, and 4-4 four and four in the A-10. At St. Bonaventure, Bonnie's, 8-1, and 6-1 and one in the A-10. Riley Center, St. Bonaventure, Bonaventure, New York. Let's see what we're dealing with here. The Bonnie's open up as 11-point favorites. That goes to 10 and a half. This total opens up at 131. And a few 130 and a halves are now on the board. George Mason coming off sweeping a home and home with St. Joe's. Leading scorer Jordan Miller went for a combined 35 points, 11 boards in the two games. He's averaging 15.7 points, 5.6 boards on the year. They have three others scoring in low double digits in Javon Green, Tyler Kolek, and Joshua Duro. Fifth leading scorer A.J. Wilson, questionable with an elbow injury. The Patriots struggle with their shot, 43.1% from the field, 31.7% from three, and just 62.5% from the foul line. These Bonnies are rolling. Coming off their sixth straight win, 65-61 over Duquesne. Their defense continues to lead them as they held the Dukes to 36.7% from the field, 21.7% from three. They allowed just 60.7 points per game. Two-headed monster at guard and Kyle Lofton and Jaron Holmes, who both averaged 15 points per game. They have six foot ten Osun Asuni, someone that Max has talked about on the show often, in the paint, averaging 9.7 points, nine boards. This is a formidable squad and a big favorite here at 10.5, Max. What's your move, George Mason, St. Bonaventure? Jim, listen, you know that I'm a Yukon Husky guy. And when I'm not a Yukon Husky guy, I am a diehard, religious, Bonna Nation superhero. I was going to say something else, but I thought that would be a little too R-rated for this show. So at least I thought before I spoke. I'll tell you this, Jim. I love St. Bonnie's. They're just great, okay? They may not shoot the ball well. They may not make a lot of threes. And when they shoot threes, some of them could be ugly. Kyle Lofton, he reminds me of Kyle Lowry. He's a floor general. He's a winner. He's brought this team up. And you know what? These guys still have a couple seasons together, you know? The addition of Jalen Attaway has been night and day. I was hoping to get a really good dose of Anthony Roberts, but he's left the team because of personal reasons. So that is a big hit, considering that we also lost Justin Winston when the season started because I guess he was too beta to stay and fight for his starting position. Decided I'm going to transfer out like a cuck. But I won't get on that topic. I'll tell you this, Jim. St. Bonnie's, they've gone under in seven straight games. Well, we are yet to see a number this low. However, we have seen tons of games that Bonnie's have played that have stayed under 130. So this 130 doesn't scare me. I like 131 better because it's higher. I do like the under in this game 100%. It's going to be one of my bets. I just don't know if it's something that I want to put other people on the show on. I think that with St. Bonnie's, this is a team that wins and leads with defense. They cover up a lot of shooting blemishes aside from Jerron Holmes uh, with that. And you you nailed it. Osana Shuni, with him in the middle, him healthy, this is an ATS team that takes care of business aside from the last time we backed them against Duquesne where they failed to cover by one point. Well, they're at home. They're going to have to know and worry about the X factor for George Mason, the only guy that I fear. I don't fear A.J. Wilson. I don't fear Javon Green or Jamal Hartwell or any of those guys or Xavier Johnson. I fear Tyler Kolick. Even though he only averages 10.6 points per game, when that kid is hitting threes, games go over for George Mason, and George Mason is stymie and stingy and breaks my heart. Last time they were in this type of point range, I believe it was against, I think it was against UMass that they were close to this. And they went to overtime or double OT and won that game. Well, you're not going to have that with St. Bonnie's. Okay. Bonnie's are going to have hard crisp ball movement because Mark Schmidt says so. And you got to respect the scrappy style that they play. 
They collapse on you on the perimeter. They'll trap you and freaking try and surprise you with a little full court press. And even though they can get a little bit wild with their changing of defensive systems, they always got the rim protector in the middle to freaking clean up if someone makes a mistake on their assignment. I think that if you mix up the defense, you're going to keep George Mason off balance. This isn't a premier efficient team by any stretch or means of any kind. And I think that this is a spot where the Bonnies are going to win by 15 to 16 points. So I'm going to take the goddamn Bonnies full game. I'm not taking them first half because we have seen them be a team that Comes in a little sleepy. You know, they got to rub the sleep out of their eyes, throw some water on their face, and then they get rolling in the second half where they have a plus 12 advantage in conference. I don't care. My bonnies are going to come through for us. No ass clenching. No heavy-duty equipment needed to unclench my ass. It's going to be a wire-to-wire win that I'm just laughing and sitting with my beer on my gut. Sounds nice. You're not on the under. I'm on the under, but I'm not making it a show pick. It's, okay. It's a little. It's a little dicey. We have a ten and a half. That's pretty much across the. Oh no, circus at eleven. So we're ten and a half of Fanduel, with the uh, regular juice minus ten and a half, at minus one ten for max, on the Bonnies minus ten and a half. Minus 110, and that's available at FanDuel. 